Hello everyone, thanks for joining me. We are going to talk about step two of the creating your onboarding plan sections, the first section in the guide for creating an onboarding plan. And so I wanna go over, there's a couple different options for methods that really depend on your personality, your members, and the experience you want to offer them. So I'm going to go through a couple of these different styles. And these are terms that I kind of came up with while I'm working through this uh, course. So if there are better names or you find, you know, when you're searching, there's different terminology, just know that this is the terminology I created for this course. So uh, you really want to know your members like and this goes back again to the discovery calls the ideal member calls making sure that you've already gotten those accomplished because um, that will give you a really good sense of being able to identify the best method for your members um, the first is the that i'm going to talk about is the video walkthrough uh, it's good for verbal and auditory learners, and uh, it really means you create a video where you would do something like what I'm doing now, you know, share a screen, and you'd walk them through step by step of, here, you know, here's where you get the course content, I, you know, update your profile, share an introduction. You would give them the step by step uh, video tutorials, and that is a good thing sometimes it depends again how you've got to know your members as, as well as you know you want to keep the video short and even so some people just are not interested in watching a video to learn and that's what we'll go through in the other steps um, this also kind of depersonalizes it and it doesn't feel so welcoming like it does but it doesn't um, depending on how you know, you come across on video or, or audio. Um, so it just depends. Again, I think they're good in some scenarios where people need like a video to, to learn, oh, here's where I go for something. But I'll show in the other areas that we can actually answer some of these questions in different ways. I think a lot of people do the video because it's easy um, for the Money Network host. I also think it does not do service to members that are in your community necessarily. Depends on how big your community is. If you got a thousand people, a video walkthrough probably makes sense. Um, okay, orientation packet is the next one. You could combine these as well, just so you know. Uh, orientation packet is really uh, good for visual, sol solitary, and logical learners. Um, this would include either creating emails or posts inside the Money Network telling the members how to access the content, why they want to attend events, like what they're going to benefit from being a part of this community, how they can connect with other members, um, and using photos and screenshots uh, with a clear step-by-step -step instructions to help members know where to go, what to do, and why they will want to join, participate, and connect with other members. So you want to do this in the welcome video, in, this, in the first uh, the video walkthrough as well. I, I just brought this up a little bit more in the orientation packet that you really want to hit hit home with people when you're um, whichever step you choose, whichever method you choose, that um, they are feeling welcomed and it's a it's a good place. Some people learn better with a screenshot, a step by step, and it's easier for them to process. They don't have to they don't want to watch a video and then have to wait till minute two and then you show them what their answer was you know they can just get right to the question um so that's that's something um that's helpful for a lot of people i've seen that work really well in communities um it also still is not as personal as you know having a, a live video um or some of these the other things we're going to go over um but it does help when you have the ability to like maybe send them information before like, or as they're, if you're sequencing out emails, like as they're coming into the community, like day one, you would have a welcome email. Day two, you would have like a create your profile photo and do the introduction. You know, maybe day three would be like share something from week one session or, you know, something else about your community. You could do something like that 
and then it also be included in, you know, step by steps instructions for how to get to wherever you want them to go, meaning like a screenshot of the profile photo and how they upload one of those and how they update their introduction. Okay. Learn by doing is for physical and social learners. So creating an event or a course or a challenge that encourages them to upload their profile, write an introduction, connect them with others in the network through social events, such as a welcome party, orientation party um, for your network. These are great ways to connect members, not only connect them to you but as the host, but also connect them to each other which is super duper important when you want them to stay <laughs> because they can create these amazing bonds right from the very beginning um, with each other. And then that encourages them to want to stay in this space. Uh, some ways you can do that, I mentioned here, like the events, like a welcome party, a pre-welcome a pre to the course, like instead of just starting with like week one material, if you're doing a course or instruction, then say, First, we're gonna do a welcome introduction. So that's more of like a get to know you and get to know other people in the course. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can do that. I can give more examples if you, if you need later. Um, but that's a, a good way because then it gets people interacting right away. This would be my preferred method, I think, um, had I the next for going forward, like if I was had a um, a group of people all come in at the same time. That also kind of stipulates if you have a live event uh, that everybody's in the same place at the same time, like they all join at the same time when you first, this would be good for like first launching your beta group. Um, concierge is really just talking about individually, personally welcoming that member. Um, it's good for solitary, verbal and auditory learners. Uh, this would be over a phone or a video um, you could do it over emails or text, text messages as well. It just depends on how you typically communicate with this person. And you can establish, you know, a communication style in the very beginning of your relationship um, is typically really, really helpful. So if this person always responds to your text messages and not your emails, you know, like, OK, I need to connect with them in a text message. Or if they're like, I want to, you know, you want to show them the app, then, um, you know, you could be on a call with them and then them sitting in front of their computer and they're like looking at it or something. So there's different ways you can go about the concierge, but it's really a, a more uh, specialized one-on-one -on -one call that you can conduct with each member as you are inviting them in. This gives a little higher level of service basically to them to say, you're really important. And that's a really nice gesture to say, I think I value you for being a member and I really wanna make sure that you can get the best out of what is available here in our network. And I wanna make sure that you know where everything is and how to get there. And if there's any questions, so you can create an event or you can create a calendar where you're inviting them or you can actually just you know schedule with them through emails a session and they'll know exactly like, Oh, I get it. I know where to go. I know what to do. I'm excited. Then they're also excited for the community. So I really do like the concierge. Um, it's what I've been doing because I'm, I have a small community. If you have a lot of people, this probably isn't going to make sense. If you have like 60 people um, that you're inviting at the same time or something, or if you had, you know, like uh, a wait list for a course and then you open up the court, the wait list and it's, you know, you get 50 or something people that might not be realistic. So it just depends again on, you know, you knowing what you're able to do, what's going to make sense for you and what's going to make sense for your members. So this all goes back again to just finding calm <laughs> with what is going to help you the most. I have some resources here about the learning styles. I, I found some uh, resources that I used for, kind of to explain the learning styles. Um, and then there's some walkthrough, some examples of some other onboarding styles and interactive walkthroughs. And you can make the, it fun with games and, and there's all kinds of fun things you can do. So that is that I am going to end this for now and we will see you in step three.